Hello and welcome to the Modern Prairie Homestead. Today we have Vet Colin here from Nomad Veterinary Services here in Central Alberta. He is going to ultrasound our three sheep and see if we have any pregnancies. Here. They'll follow. Come on, Leo. When were they exposed to the ram? They said all summer. Okay. Really nice. Here, if they come in, then I can close them in. Here, can you come out? She wants to feed them. You can do one scoop, quick. Ready? Here. You do one scoop. Uh oh. Uh oh. Eat. Do want to be through the abdomen rather? Because they've seen it down to. So what we'll do, we'll take the face. How do you do that? We tip them. Oh! Pass the lube over. I miss missed. It is funny that as soon as you tip them, they kind of just go limp. Yeah, they just give up. Do you want me to keep holding this? Are you okay? No, no, it's okay. okay. Oh, how do you get your gloves off? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Didn't see a baby. We'll let you go. Just confirm we can find one in one of the three. Not this one. That's okay. Flip or wherever you're going to. Oh, oh we're in our room, baby. Perfect. I feel like you're probably pregnant. You got a big belly. <laughs> so she is pregnant. Uh -huh. You actually want to look in. You sure one. One, unsure on this one. There you go. <laughs> Yay! Which one is that one? The yellow tag. Okay. My guess was that the red one, was, like that one, was the next one. Oh, the next one. I didn't think this one was. I didn't think the smallest one was either. So they told us. No, and she's younger than the other two. So how long have you been doing vet stuff for? Six years. Oh yeah, good for you. Did you go to school in Calgary for it? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Okay. And then we started in cattle only for a while. And then I went to New Zealand. Uh, not even last, 2023. And did some small animal eyes there. Pregnant, at least one. Oh yay! Good job. Two of the three. Two of the three. Awesome. Okay, I have questions. Sure. When should they have them? Do you think? These ones, so they'll be, they're pretty small, so they would have been bred like later in the summer. Like, they're not generally going to have them like early winter for like the size of the fetuses, so they're shorter than cows, but they'll they'll still be like not over winter. Okay. But, Keep them in here, in case they're early at all. Especially yeah. twins sometimes. So, so probably like, like March, April? Yeah, it'd be kind okay. of expect. And yeah, so we just closed one here. Yeah. I know for calves and stuff, you should have like colostrum and bottles and There's stuff ready. not a lot available in the sheep world. Okay. You have to get it like frozen from a colony or something. But should we get that for sure? Um, if they suck well the first time, then 
they, I, like having it on hand is good, I guess, is my answer. Cause okay. If they decide to lamb out at 2 a.m. on a Sunday, then you, if you don't have it, if you, you don't have it, you don't have it. Okay. Is one heat lamp enough if it's like minus 40? Mm. I guess if it's March, it might be. Yeah, like for the babies, you probably want another. I was thinking of making like a bit of a box for them with a yeah, lamp. Yeah, I've seen that done yeah. and it, it does well generally. Okay. It's like a three-sided thing and then put a separate heat lamp yep. right in that. Yep. Okay. And then they still have access to mom, but then they're kind of double protected in here. Yeah. Do they need electrolytes or anything like that, the babies? Um, they have issues. Okay. And how much human intervention do he sheep usually need? Like how much help do mm. they need? Um, more than cattle. More than cattle. Okay. So the most common problem you'll get in sheep is tangled up twins. Sheep okay. and goats, like they, they love to twin. Okay. So it's the, it tends to make it easier because you need way fewer C-sections and like okay. severe intervention. Because twins always, almost always come out easy. It's just like when they get, both want to come at once. Yeah, then it's tangle, not good. Their legs tangle. Okay. So most of the time all you have to do is you go in and just like push one head back. And it'll and be the other one to come out. And okay. You get two out on the ground, not really with much issue. Okay. Um, yeah, percentage-wise, depends on the herd. Is there like a number of days that the lambs will make it and then they'll be okay? Like I know a lot mm. of them do pass away. Yeah, a lot of it's the first 30 days is the your first biggest 30. risk factors. Okay. After that, you, like that's generally the model you work under is like, first 24 hours, do they make that? And then, or like, do they live through the birthing process? And then the first 30 days are your highest risk just because they're, exposed to everything new for the first time. Okay. Once you hit 30, they tend to do okay. Like you, you're kind of like, you're up, you're running, you're good to go. Anything special I should be feeding the ones that are pregnant? Oh, um, what is the feed you have? Uh, it's just like a, I can show you, it's just like a sheep pellet. Okay. And then a beet pulp. That should probably be fine. I can double check it. And then hay, it's... obviously. Oh, and then hay, yeah. yeah. And I just yeah. do free choice hay because I like doing that, especially in yeah. the winter. Yeah, free choice hay is great. The sheep pellet, the main thing is you want to get your pr crude protein levels up high okay. later in gestation. Is there special, so... um, like, sheep feed, like, fe pregnancy no. feed? No. Yeah, it's more just, like, balancing it with what you have. So, okay. depending on the quality of the hay, the alfalfa content, like that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah that's good for them, yeah. Enough. Um, and then the pellets normally are pretty high in protein. So okay. They tend to run into issues. Okay. It's more when people are feeding like slew hay and yeah, straw yeah, yeah, yeah. or something to fill them that yeah. you lose your protein. No, we'll we'll feed them well for sure. Do the lambs need much in terms of aftercare, like any vaccinations or anything like that? Uh, not in the first month, and then once they hit the first like six week mark, you can start vaccinating. So like yeah, initially because when they get their first suck from mom, they get that colostrum that gives them the antibodies. Yeah. So if you try to vaccinate them, those antibodies just kill the vaccine, so it uh, doesn't okay. actually do anything. Umbilical cords. I know with large animals, lots of times they just snap and you don't have to deal with them. Yep. Yep. They do that. You can soak them in iodine or betadine if you're concerned at all. But they will like um, break but they themselves. Will snap and okay. Be fine. Yeah. Okay. If they don't. If they, they do. <laughs> if they don't. Okay. The biggest issue you'll get is actually they snap too short. Okay. And then that is something you want to soak more. What are the signs of labor? Like, what do we look for? Mm. If all of a sudden, like, do they get huge udders or like what? Yeah, so they'll start bagging first. Okay. So the, the udders will, like, start putting colostrum in there. Okay. And they'll start, like, really having a bunch. Like, they'll go from kind of having an udder to, like, quite big. Okay. Um, and then they'll... It might be a bit harder. It depends on if how warm it is. So if they're out there versus in here, they'll often go kind of isolate themselves somewhere in the, Alone, yeah. in the field that they have access to. So they'll like kind of walk the pens around, do the strut, I call it. So the, the calving strut, but lining strut. So they'll be like kind of looking for a spot. Okay. And then they'll, the called springing, so the back end, the, the external vaginal area will get like really flaccid because they're preparing to give birth. Um, and then obviously they'll lie down and start pushing and moaning and grunting. And... Okay. Yeah, I think we like, we pretty much leave this open all day for them. And okay. Then I wouldn't move. be surprised if they walked in here. Yeah, it's like yeah. an enclosed space. They'll either go like in the far farthest off corner. Yeah. Because this is yeah. kind of the food area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or this will be warm. They know they're gonna lamb out, and they'll they'll come hide and not hide. Yeah, yeah. And start. Does so, it make sense to like um, start 
start putting them in here at night just to be safe. Yeah, like you totally could. Kind of yeah, that's just true. Make sure they're yeah. in here so even even whenever from we're now. Not watching them, right? Yeah, even even now going forward, you could totally do that. Just yeah. minus eight overnight is. Yeah. And and they like only three. They should fight off coyotes and whatnot, but like coyotes are yeah. little yeah. bastards around here. We are close enough to the river valley that you do get them wandering around. Oh yeah, yeah. we hear them at night a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Wouldn't be a bad idea at all to walk around here. Yeah. Okay, well that was awesome. So you probably saw in our last video, the pig's water dish was frozen solid. I did not get it back working, so Andrew picked up one of these bigger pails. Since they're bigger now, they can get their heads in it. But they have flipped it over every night and every morning. So huh? you put it in a tire. Maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Better. The piggies. 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 Yeah. Do you think they want some hay? Hey. So we're running several different heaters, water bowl, uh, water dish heaters, and uh, heat lamps for the animals. We got one for the cats, chickens, sheep, and pigs, and then water to go with that. So currently all of this is only being run off a couple of circuits. We recently discovered a third circuit over by the uh, sheep pasture um, that someone's, the previous owners must have run underground power. Uh, we have it up and running right now, so I'm just breaking that up and running power from a different location so that when we run everything on high in the thick of winter that we're not flipping breakers. Cheese time. Uh -huh. Cheese time. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope everyone has a great week. Where is Kitty Mouse? Oh, right there.